Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So, guys, please do subscribe to all three channels, Evolution, which we created right before they demonized us and almost took Evolutionary off the, uh, off the air, so to speak. So that was the backup channel. It's been the main channel because um, a lot of the videos on Evolutionary are constantly being pulled and given strikes. And then Heart's Home, which is the lighter spiritual side of things. And so, you know, I want to do something right now that's going to bridge um, kind of all three channels. And so we're going to throw this up, I think, on Evolutionary, which will be a shock to the system of some, which is great. Because if we don't expand, where is the growth? And so many people are still uh, caught in uh, just a tangled web that has been woven by the control system. We do want to thank everybody for your support over on Patreon, where there are new unique videos that only go up over there that we speak very plainly on. And speaking of plainly, this is Matthew 13, let's start 13.9. He who has ears, let him hear. Then the disciples came to Jesus and asked him, Why do you speak to people in parables? He replied, The knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has never has been given to you, but not to them. Oh, wow. That almost sounds elitist, doesn't it? But But listen to this again. He spoke to the disciples and told him the knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them, not to the masses. The masses will not understand the deepest mysteries. And we have that to this day. Now, Cindy and I know that, again, the Bible has been probably uh utilized by the control system as much or more than any other single book ever it is the most published book in in the world in all of our recorded history by far so yeah the bible has you know reached more hands more eyes more minds than any other book out there and you know that's important to realize because again there are clues in there, but those clues don't become evident until you start studying all the different traditions and the different myths from around the world and also developing your own spiritual practice, which for, you know, Cindy and I is, is the focus of our day is going within. We, we do not use um, any big pharma. We do not use any sort of drugs, legal or illegal, and we eat extremely clean and we also prioritize meditation, qigong, and our mantras literally for hours every day. So, you know, we, we, we don't allow ourselves to be open to uh, lower frequencies. And, and that is so very important because honestly, if you're still out there partying every day or if you're still imbibing uh, things that will lower your frequency, you're opening doors. You're absolutely opening doors to dark energies that can cloud the thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and there's a lot of people out there who have had a lot of trauma and they might go the way of their, their DR, but there's so many different <clears throat> types of plant medicines that can be used if, if you're someone who's been through a lot of trauma and you're just trying and trying and trying and not getting anywhere. There are plant medicines. There's a lot of studies that show that, I mean, in extremely small amounts, they can really, really help the brain heal. They can help repair it, but so can mantras and meditation. It just depends on our lifestyle, where we are able to go, what we are able to do, but there's things out there and it doesn't have to be uh, extreme and it doesn't have to be um, anything that takes you out of your of your own mind but there's help out there absolutely so you know again I've, I've shared before I mean for me personally um, there's no temptation really to use anything mind-altering because I can alter my consciousness by simply doing meditation and yes it does take a little bit of work but anything really worth it takes work and that's the bottom line it takes time it takes work and we have shining examples out there um, that we won't really name 
but we have regular uh, family members out there that we have have dealt with in the past and and are dealing with right now, uh, helping with their their spiritual practice, that have gone down the deep deepest darkest depths, and it doesn't keep them from rising up now. You can overcome. I mean, if if you knew what some of these people that are out there that are part of this family commenting on a regular basis have been through, and they're still going strong. In fact, they're actually uh, rising up now to all new heights, even with you know having gone down these dark self destructive paths. They're overcoming, and if they could do it, you could do it too. I mean. Some of the wisest people who have the deepest understanding and the most wisdom to share have definitely been in that situation where, you know, think of a diamond, think of how how much a diamond is going to get crushed and how much pressure it's under. But when it is removed and it that pressure is taken off, that is a really, really beautiful, precious stone. So what we're sharing with you here is um, it comes from a variety of different sources, but mostly it's coming from ourselves and our, our higher selves and our guides. And again, we, we don't put stock in any one uh, person or even really any one belief system. Um, it, it, it's not like that. No, we, we always go within to feel what feels right, what comes through from the higher self, because the higher self is at a at a place that can see all that's going on and even understanding what the higher self really is 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 misunderstood of course in in this world because again this world is operating uh, operating completely on the basis uh in a very parasitic manner uh of cutting us off from who we really are in our true higher selves so Obviously, the knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven and the heavens would not be something that the control system would want the masses to have. So, you know, they give them different belief sets, which are totally um, red herrings. You know, they are labyrinths that lead to nowhere. And here we see 60 scientists are trying to block the sun. Uh, Yeah, this is... Hopefully we'll be able to get past this, guys. Okay, there we go. Yeah, they they've really they've done a lot to screw up our uh, computer, but we do have backup to our backup to our backup, which frustrates them. So yeah, we've seen this. This is from March second. Experts say reflecting sunlight will reduce the risk of climate change. We we know we get this. This is the big thing. Why do you have microbiologists? Why do you have doctors? All of a sudden, all they're talking about is climate change. It's because they're they're part of the system, and, and that's what they've been told to do. Talk about climate change. The reality is, what do they want to do? They want to block the sun's rays. Why would they want to do that? Because the sun is a relay from source, and the sun is sending us the information, light is information, that's changing our DNA and awakening us. They don't, these, these, these beings are parasites. They're ticks and they're leeches. They don't want us picking them off of us and discarding them. No, this is how they operate. Everything in this world, if you haven't noticed, is parasitic. Think about taxes. Absolutely. I mean, you pay taxes on top of taxes. You have a family member, your mom dies, leaves you uh, property, you got to pay taxes again. You know, capital gain. I mean, it's it's so parasitic in nature. Everything about this system shows that the controllers of this world are parasites. As you see, Gil Bates backs uh, plan to tackle climate change by blocking out the sun. Well, the climate always changes. Climate change is natural and normal. And and the reality is, in other ages, uh, we've been much, much warmer than we are now. But yet, life has been far more abundant. This is part of what the system doesn't want you to understand. 
you looking to block out the sun. They're all looking to block out the sun. It's not about climate change. It's about keeping humanity in the darkness. For for a very long time, they have been working on blocking us from source, and, and it's a it's a it's a plan. It's a methodical plan, and they do it in these increment steps. And if you if you look at um, how they set everything up and how we are in a silver age or a golden age, you can see the mimicry that they're trying to set up. And that's another thing about them. They, they mimic. They do not have anything that is from their original who they are. They always mimic. But if you look at uh, text messages, you know, you look at cell phones, look at holograms. All of these things can be done with the human body with work yes it does take a lot of work and silver age golden age you can bilocate and there's been reports of bilocating but what do they use they use a hologram you know what do what do they use with with me- they use text messaging when we can speak with one another in our minds that's that's something that we cannot forget who we are and we come from that original source also keep in mind that the sun is, is plasma, and, and our bodies are plasma. They're, they're very thick, dense forms of plasma. So we, the sun is our, is our food. It's our body's food, and they're, they're cutting us off from that. It, it's not nice. Absolutely. And as we've been talking about on uh, Heart's Home, and we've shared this in the past, every single star you see is a conscious being. Some people have noticed that the stars will twinkle to them, almost say hi. You know, one of my dear uh, friends that's in the mountains of North Carolina, she can go out and she'd talk to them and she'd say, they're talking to me right back. Now, she um, was clinically dead and had, you know, one of those experiences that altered her completely. I mean, here she was a lawyer deep in the world and she clinically died and now she's just the most devout uh, hindu you can imagine and it's really although she still believes in yeshua which again that those two are not uh, you it, you don't have to pick any one system and just stick to any one system because there's good points in all systems there's teachers in all systems this is part of, of what the world does. The, the control grid get, gets us to make a choice, pick. You know, do you really like Yeshua or do you prefer Krishna? You know, you don't have to pick because these beings themselves don't work against each other. They don't have egos, you know, like our controllers have egos. They're not about the ego. They understand the bigger picture. Every star is a magnificent consciousness it, it's it's an in, incredible uh very advanced consciousness that understands the big picture understands the plan of source just think about how our our system does glorify stars right i mean you got hollywood oh yeah oh they got their star on hollywood yeah we understand that unfortunately most of these stars they really had dark sides and the system itself in order to get you to that uh upper echelon you know you'll be famous you will never want anything and i've shared with you the illuminati came to me back in 2017 and said you know we want you to join us we've been watching you for a long time Come join us. We'll send you for training, you know, in Atlanta. You'll have a mentor, et cetera, et cetera. You'll never want anything. And I said, no, uh, no thanks, you know, flattering offer, but not interested. And then what happened there after that? Well, you know, there was somebody that drove through a fence and looked to come and hit my house right where I was sitting but it was blocked it was kind of miraculous that the car left its bumper in my driveway but somehow it hit something that was invisible apparently and scooted on down taking out light poles and other uh, things and then I also had a visit from a tall gray just a little while after that that tried to sabotage me physically by causing an energy leak it's because, you know, the people 
are working with the, these dark entities that you might call extraterrestrial, and many of them are interdimensional at the same time. But we ourselves are uh, multidimensional beings. When you look to Revelation 12:4. Then another sign appeared in heaven, a huge red dragon with seven heads, ten horns, and seven royal crowns on its heads. His tail swept a third of the stars from the sky, tossing them to the earth. E yeah, you know, Revelation 12, you know, all this, the, the um, October 7, 2017 eclipse initiating in, uh, period of tribulation, September, you know, the Revelation 12 sign, you know, again, uh, to finish this out. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, ready to devour her child as soon as she gave birth. And she gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all nations with an iron scepter. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. You know, again, uh, there's so much distortion in, in the Bible. Obviously, you can't take this literally because stars are much bigger than the earth typically. And even if they weren't, even if you were looking at a dwarf, it would still destroy the planet coming, making contact. Obviously, obviously, this is not to be taken literally. But the other part that's really obvious is that it's put in there to just get people to go chase down these um, red herrings chase down these winding corridors that don't lead to real, real answers. That's something I think we need to guard against when the information does come out, you know, is I, I rabbit holes, I think are good because we go down those rabbit holes to figure out who we are, especially if you're going through an awakening, but it does reach a point where you do know who you are and you know that the system throws a lot of curveballs. So the, at that point, you'd want to guard against where you spend your energy, where you spend your time, and understanding that they really, what they really want to do is they want to harness your energy. So whenever you feel that coming on, whenever you feel the system creeping up on you to start harnessing your energy. Remember, keep in mind that you are far bigger. And if your energy is harnessed down here, guess what? It, it's harnessed up there. Absolutely. So this is another one, Revelation 6, 13. Uh, and the stars of the sky fell to the earth as a fig tree cast its unripe figs when shaken by a great wind. The sky was split apart like a scroll when it's rolled up and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. You know, again, the controllers understand uh, what's going on because they've done this many times. This is not the first Kali Yuga. This is not the first Kali Yuga that we're, we're, we're leaving in the, in the rearview mirror. Each one is unique, but they use the same techniques and the same plays each time. So... When we start to understand that this isn't the wor the word of the creator of this universe, no, 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 this is this is basically given to us by those beings we would call the Greys, that we would call the Anunnaki and the Ajiji, and those secret societies that we call the Illuminati, and and so many more that are all working in context together. This truly was put together by a consortium of earth humans along with greys and you know some beings that came from mars that we would call the gg and others uh, coming from nibiru and it you know it was done very carefully it was also designed so that if anyone speaks anything different than other than what's in this book you are you're demonized you're cast down you're you're shunned you know you're frowned upon and it's to keep us really after one another and and that's really a sad and unfortunate thing because even families if somebody breaks out of the matrix and they understand that there is a lot more out there and that it, it's not evil and bad to pursue things the families turn on that person instead of getting curious and wondering and trying to understand because the way that this uh, book is set up and the way that the system is set up, it sets us up to really, really 
be very mean to one another. And um, a lot of that meanness is out of fear because someone thinks that uh, another person is going to burn in hell for forever. And sure, they don't want them to burn in hell forever. But this is the fear aspect of it all. So, you know, you look at the design of it and it was done very meticulously, very carefully. And here you have Yahweh interrogating Job. Water becomes hard like stone and the surface of the deep is imprisoned. Can you bind the change of the Pleiades? Think about that. The chains of the Pleiades. Or loose the cords of Orion. Can you lead forth a constellation at season and guide the bear with her satellites? Uh, the bear is Ursa Major. Probably it could be Ursa Minor too. Both of them are bear constellations. And when they're talking about the constellations, they're talking about the stars, but they're also talking about the planets too. There are beings on planets. Planets are created to have beings. This is the whole purpose of planets. Life is abundant because consciousness creates the conditions to explore new worlds because ultimately we are eternal and we will get bored. Just that simple. This is all in some ways uh, a divine drama that we are playing out right now. I think it's really uh, telling that, again, Job is thought to be the oldest book in the Bible. And when you recognize that the putting together of the Bible started in 325 A.D. with the Council of Nicaea, it didn't get completed to 380 A.D. And, you know, again, we're talking hundreds of years after Yeshua walked the earth. And when you really look at it, the oldest copy of the Old Testament, when we're talking about uh, the Jewish uh, scriptures, that really, the oldest copies we have are like a thousand years or uh, thereabouts. A.D. A.D. This is all completely revisionist history. This is totally the mainstream media. Um, and I know it, it, it's devastating to so many because they, this is what they've been brought up with. But, you know, again, is it possible that your parents, that your, you know, rabbis, that your priests, that your pastors, that it's possible that they really didn't understand the bigger picture? Are they infallible? You know, on, let's be honest about that. Have you ever faulted your parents? Of course, we, we've all thought that we knew better than our parents. And a lot of times we, we very well may in certain subjects, but there might be other things that they know more than us. Pleiades, can you bind the chains of the Pleiades? Can you loose the cords of Orion? You know, again, Orion, uh, there's in the law one, it talks about the Orion group. And, you know, again, there are uh, a lot of things uh, that we could take bits and pieces of and, and start to find clues as to what's going on. It, it truly is a galactic battle that we find ourselves in. And yeah, the Pleiades are where uh, the Lyran refugees went to. And, and part of the revelation is uh, some would say that even Earth itself is really part of this system. Certainly, Earth has been used as a refugee center from, from the great draconian Lyran wars that have been ongoing for you know, eons. And times are changing. We're moving up in the Kali Yuga. And I, I think a lot of um, people are really feeling the change and the separation and energies and what that means and what it looks like. And, and it is becoming more and more evident as time passes. Uh, you know, if you're on a, a journey where you are awakening, you'll start to look around and, and at those that are in your sphere of influence and realize it's just not, you're not vibing with them the same anymore. It doesn't make anyone bad or anyone less. It just means that your vibration is changing. And soon we might not have the ability to stay around um, others that we used to. Oh, how thou, how thou have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How thou cut down to the ground. And so, you know, this is that famous verse that gets everybody thinking of Satan as Lucifer. And, you know, again, we could look at different translations. This is the King James Version, by the way, King James. 
head of all the Masonic lodges in Scotland and England. This is the Illuminati's, uh, you know, uh, leadership really in so many ways. And we say Illuminati, uh, it, there's really multiple, as we know, there are so many different, um, secret societies, you know, in the Masonic lodges, in, in politics. Politics is all, you know, basically when you get to the upper echelons, they're all secret societies completely. And, you know, Daystar, Son of the Dawn, again, this is one of those distortions. What we should take from here, oh, star of the morning, star of the morning, and, and, you have said, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God and sit on the mount of the assembly in the recession of the north. You know, th what we can take from it is how they are placing uh, the heavens and the stars as a very high level of being because they are. That part's, that part's accurate. In fact, you know, the stars themselves, when we talk about our higher selves, there is this whole concept of, of star seeds, and we're going to get into that um, as we look at Matthew 24, which is uh, famous, you know, again. It's another one which talks about signs in heaven, you know, wars and rumors of war, more wars, etc. And it talks about the stars again falling, and, and you know, they obviously stars really can't fall. But again, these these are references to incarnating beings, and and where is their ultimate um, higher self? It, it's in the stars themselves, as Cindy was saying. Make sure you bring up the twelve zodiac signs and the twelve apostles. Everything revolves around the stars, and to really understand this stuff, I think, is to understand astrology to to a higher degree and then you really start to get it because you can see that these beings they come from elsewhere they come down here and they incarnate for purposes to help other people to do other things and you can see the physical body if that is harnessed it's harnessed at a higher level as well because that energy you know travels up and it travels down but we uh, need to keep that in mind that things are very, I think they're very literal in, in the sense when they talk about the Dyson sphere and harnessing the power of the stars. To me, that's harnessing us and it's getting our attention pointed where they want. And if we're not going to voluntarily point ourselves in that direction, they're going to come and force it. <laughs> As we can see, the awakening is happening. It's becoming very clear that uh, the time for us to exercise our freedoms is coming to a close if we allow it and i look at a lot of these illuminati we call them illuminati but you know you can call them reptilians you can call them draco these are beings that are not nice and they hide in the shadows and they work through other human beings because if they were to actually show themselves could you imagine i mean jaw would hit the floor people would not people would automatically know at that point they know so we have to be mindful and understand that they work through other other human looking beings yeah there's so much allegory and they have given us some truths because there are some things in there that are meant to entice us and when we start understanding the deeper esoteric symbolism um, it might keep us going down the rabbit holes that are helpful to them and not understanding the biggest picture. But 12 apostles, is it just an arbitrary number? No, it, it's symbolic, again, of the Zodiac. Same thing with the tw 12 tribes. You know, wandering 40 years in the desert, uh, 40 days of fasting. I mean, there, all this symbolism, 144,000, again, 12 times 12, you know, it, it's all of it is symbolism that, that it's pointing um, towards some more universal truths. But one thing that's fascinating, too, is just all the myths of the constellations. There are so many myths and legends of these beings that had lives on Earth and then there's tragedy and what have you. And then they were placed in the stars. Well, the reality is we come from the stars in the first place. 
uh, these 10 legendary constellations and the stories behind them, when you start looking at this and you start truly thinking, what does it really mean to be a starseed? Well, you know, we can look at things in an obvious manner and we can look to um, the Dogen tribe, you know, which will point to the stars and say, well, we come from over there. That's where our ancestors come from. You see, no, no, not that one, this one over there. And, you know, again, they, they realize that they came from other star systems to Earth. But there's even a bigger reality to that. You know, these, these constellations are conscious energies. And we do have a uh, star family. There are beings that just naturally tend to gravitate together. And again, this gets into... Uh, a lot of things and archetypes and archetypal energies. When we talk about the archangels, these archangels are are literally even even beyond um, this. The true archangels are even beyond this one one particular manifest universe because this is one universe among many. It's just one cell. This is how everything is. It's the as above, so below, as within, so without. We can learn so much just by the simple uh, hermetic truths that we are given. It's meant to be a mystery so we can lose ourselves in the journey. And that's, that's part of the bigger play. So, you know, again, the guides are always saying, you know, we, we can't interfere with your human experience because we're not normally human. And, and they won't either. You know, it's just about uh, parents and, and children. Sometimes you have to let your child make mistakes. Sometimes you have to let your child fall down so they get really good at picking themselves up. So it really is, <clears throat> it's, about, it's about love and it's about understanding and it's about non-interference. And that's probably one of the biggest uh, rules of the game that I have seen is this law of non-interference and I have only seen it happen when there's lives at stake and that was part of someone's journey if they're going down the wrong path something that they did not agree to or that they did not want then I have seen angels come in and just sit and talk to someone and and tell them something give them a warning something like that so these are all things that we have to weigh in our own heart. These are things that we have to understand for ourselves because it is, it is our journey. Yeah, and, you know, Cindy made a comment regarding like new age and new age concepts, how people of a fundamentalist persuasion will say, oh, that's new age. Oh, so you're really, really in enjoying your Kali Yuga belief set you're really enjoying the dark age belief set that that has us as slaves that's the mindset of the controllers they truly do believe we are slaves and yet people will follow uh the mainstream religious system which is teaching them that they're slaves and be okay with it well what's your ultimate purpose to serve god yeah, but you're you're not uh, not getting the point that you're not really serving the creator of everything because the creator of everything wants you to be you. Just that simple. Whatever you is, just be you. Be a unique version. Don't necessarily conform. No, again, we really shouldn't conform. We should, you know, again revel in our differences we should be excited about our differences because our differences are what make everything interesting in the first place when we come down to it we could trace back in each individual unit of consciousness to collectives to certain star groups to uh, certain star families per se to go back farther to certain archetypes go back even farther eventually we're one unified consciousness and so, you know, the whole point of everything is is exploration. And honestly, a big part of it is simply fun. Mm -hmm. It is. It's enjoying ourselves and being something different from what we typically are, but expressing yourself with what's in you. Because again, you, you do have source in you, but every single one of us are completely unique from the other. And I, I do see the star seeds. Um, 
as we're all star seeds. I don't like to I don't like to pick people apart and say, you know, you're special, you're not. If you have chosen to come here on a mission and at some point you're going to activate yourself. And I think that's that's the difference, but we are all extremely special. We all have something to give to this matrix but some of us have decided to come down here and anchor the light so that others might be able to see that and if that's what they're supposed to do here in this journey then they will see that light they'll feel that light and they'll say hey that feels kind of familiar i want to know more about that so some some people just decided to come down here to have a purely physical experience you know have the the nice car have the nice house and then that's their life too but it's very important to not separate individuals we're all here for a very special reason so when you see these um different this is from the mindfool.com um these different um places giving you characteristics and traits of a star seed as Hindu is saying everybody is a star seed because again ultimately the stars create the planets in order to have a portion of that star a particular aspect of that consciousness come and have a life experience as a being on the planet which that star is giving life to so you know that's that's one of those mysteries that are not given to the masses but something Yeshua perhaps would have shared with his inner circle. Traits of a star sea can think beyond time, strong empathy, have a deep inner wisdom, feel out of place on this planet, possess strong intuitive powers, near death and out of body experiences, feelings of isolation, loneliness, helpful, kind and generous. Well, you know, again, I, I think that there are those that are on the ascending path and moving up into uh, a higher embodiment of consciousness beyond the 3d level that we've seen in the kali yuga and the early stages of the dwapara the bronze age and there are other beings that are going to be hanging around the 3d existence for maybe hundreds or thousands of more lives so it's really more a case of what that individual soul wants to experience Right. And, and having that understanding that, you know, it, it's okay being whatever you want to be. And when you're able to look at the sky, when there is no light pollution, pollution, you can see how many stars are up there and it's very thick and it's very dense with life. Yeah. So as I was saying in a video over on Heart's Home, when you look up the sky and you're seeing the stars twinkle back to you, that's just us talking back to us, saying, hope you're having a good time down there. Yeah, you know, again, it, and we wonder why there's a mirroring and we see things like eyes in the stars, we see the horsehead nebula. I mean, there's so many, again, different fascinating objects that, you know, the scientists will say, well, it's just a collection of helium and... And, and hydrogen and just different gases again yeah again it's all coming from the plasma it's all coming from the ether it's all coming from the life force the prana which again it's all coming from source and even you know when we look at source source itself we would see represented again in in some ways like another sun again why are there planets the planets are there it's not by accident it's not just leftover junk material that's coming together and forming no this is by design this is conscious design it's creating worlds to explore and we see there's different color stars yeah there's different frequencies we're each at a unique frequency we have our own signature and yet we can categorize them as red giants, red super giants, blue giants, yellow dwarfs, red dwarfs, brown dwarfs, etc. Yeah, you know, and it, again, it, it's all, we're all at our own unique uh, stage. When we look at the beings that we would call the devas, these are beings that have had so many lives as, you know, plants, as animals as you know fish all different sorts of beings as humans as you know humanoid beings on different planetary systems 
that they they are not choosing to merge totally back in with source instead they are working from a very high perspective with humans so when we do the mantras to the devas we're contacting beings that know exactly what it's life to be it's like to be a human and we can receive guidance from that we can tap into that energy field and see if maybe something that they have to offer we can utilize in our own life path but by no means is there anybody required to um, bow down to anyone they don't want that um, and they're not jealous of each other they're just they're wanting to know hey if something I can do can add substance to your experience allow me to share with you and then it's up to you if you want to utilize that information to enrich your time here on earth there is no jealousy between them they are above that they are beyond that they've been there they've done that they're just simply here to offer and they definitely do not want to step in and alter your human experience they want to add to it because they know how magnificent and how wonderful it is to make it here on earth incarnate in a body and be able to experience all of these emotions that are so vast and so wide and so so cherished you know what they do is they just enjoy being of assistance somehow Absolutely. And so, you know, when we look to the manifest universe, which comes about through the elements and, you know, the first element is fire. And we could see that fire, you know, when we look to the stars themselves, they seem like, you know, they could be on fire, so to speak. They seem to have the same elemental nature as we shared with you. Space is not a vacuum. Space is more akin to water. Um, and so you have basically the two principles there because earth is, uh, is something that comes about from the three elements above it. Air comes about through fire and water's interaction. And so, you know, again, when we, when we look, we can see how things flow out of the ether. Uh, comes the elements first fire then water and fire we could think of in an electrical sense water in a magnetic sense we are electromagnetic beings and then we have the air and then the water the earth that finally comes from that when we leave the physical body we, we no longer really have that earthly component but we still have the other three and and that's uh life on uh the slightly higher density that um we do spend a lot of time in again most of our time is not embodied and we're going to go in a different uh video into much more depth on this because again this does relate uh to a lot of things and and it relates to our health because uh dis-ease will come about through an imbalance in the um in the makeup of these individual elements within the body and so you know in traditional chinese medicine you have five element theory and we we also can look to uh the hindu the yogic systems and you know you can actually meditate on these symbols uh to gain greater understanding of each element and yet again as above so below so when we're talking about uh, the element of water being magnetic and we're talking about space truly being more like an ocean not not so dense as the water we see on earth but truly is more like an ocean it's not a vacuum as they tell us and then we see uh, the suns and they're giving off this light. Again, that's that's the Shiva and Shakti. This is, again, uh, the yin and the yang. This is, again, that dualism that results in the manifest universe. This is the you know, uh, something to understand from the as above, so below. When we see, again... Uh, sperms going to fight to get into that egg and and then we were referencing before how we could even look at a sperm and we could look at a human head and and our uh, vertebrae in our spine and you know in reality the sperm goes into the egg and cellular mitosis takes place and and it's replicating that uh, with with the skull and the spine and that is of course the center of our 
physical existence here. As above, so below uh, is something that really, when we're looking for truth, see if it resonates with that when you're bringing something up. If there's a question in your mind, you know, does it, does what I'm thinking of, can it be uh, verified through the notion that the universe is, is based on fractals, you know, the microcosm and the macrocosm? If it fits with that, then again, it, it's probably more correct than not. Uh -huh. And we are able to find those parallels everywhere we look. If, if it's a desire and if it's a want, you start running into these parallels and these understandings. So we could go on for about another two days with all this, but, you know, 45 minutes, I think this is good for this one. And we'll go in depth in many other videos. Um, again, when we go back to that whole beginning uh, where we were talking about uh, he who has ears, let him hear, you know, again, it can be a shock to the system to, the system to realize that everything about uh, our set of beliefs that we've had is is based on uh, falsehoods and and untruths and in many cases uh, complete intentional deception the knowledge of the mysteries has been given only to the inner circle which the elites only share that with you know their chosen ones within the uh, secret societies but again you can find that knowledge elsewhere and that is what we're trying to share and I, I do think it, it's fair to say that, you know, Yeshua always also taught in parables because you weren't allowed to say certain things out in the open. And like a lot of different spiritual teachers, we really have to watch our vocabulary words a lot of times. We have to be very careful. And that's because we can get shut down completely. So it's like we are coming into a full circle where everyone who is finding these understandings, it's like you, sometimes you have to tiptoe around stuff. Is it right? No. Is it fair? No. But we'll make it. You know, we got to stick together and work with one another and help lift each other up. Absolutely. As always, guys, much love. God bless and namaste. Namaste.